All right, so see Callum. Yes, the the chains are broken, but we have our orders, so we're gonna have to get a little creative. So I am going to go to the nearest revenant, and I'm basically just gonna start chain using feral whispers on them and telling them to go sit inside and wait uh, the first one you know kind of get is there a role required with yeah, feral whispers it is manipulation animal can animalism uh contested by their uh resolve plus vitae love policy so whatever the resolve plus how much vitae they have is their contested role. They have one vitae and then two resolve, so that would be a. That's actually a contested role. It's not a. Yes, okay. it is a contested role. All right, let me go ahead and a roll then. Oh, how about I actually choose a number no, of dice? This is good. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually have them roll dice. No, 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 we're good. It, it's the same. Don't worry. It's the it. same. Yeah, let me make sure I'm rolling as this character for the sake of it. Yeah. Um, Please. <laughs> exceptional. You your dice. So, what does an exceptional success on that get you, by the way? Uh, well, it, it might not do much here. But the exceptional success is the animal is exceptionally obedient to the vampire, improvising to follow the spirit of the kindred's command. So uh, just a letter. I just told them to go sit inside and wait. So, so the, I mean, so the first one that uh, you got this role for actually grabs the others and he goes, "We're going to do what this guy says," and he starts dragging as many as he can hold, you know, with him. I don't know if that's gonna keep them there but you know what a eh, boss man doesn't need to know i didn't do it on everyone okay <laughs> and literally after he after he gets those two in he comes back out and grabs two more and starts dragging them in and they're all kind of looking around very confused like what the hell did he say to the other one okay. but he's assisting you quite thoroughly <laughs> all right i you know what? He's a good revenant. Unfortunately, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe if I ever get another humanity, I'll come and uplift him. Probably not, though. <laughs> I'm probably never gonna get another humanity. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm going. I'm gonna continue, just continue doing it while this guy is also dragging people in, just to expedite the process. All right. I suppose. And make sure that we can do to help. I mean, you can start dragging people in there. Um, one of the issues is, though, eventually powers and the like do wear out. So how do you want to try and keep them in there in the meantime? Um, the command lasts for no more than a night. So I'm going to get everyone in there and then we're going to call the boss man and say, we got a bunch of them waiting here. Send people to chain them back up because the chains are broken. We're going to go attack the Carthians like you told us to, sir. I'm going to do a little salute. Yes. <laughs> He's not here, but... <laughs> uh, see, the thing is, is do you even know how to use your phone? Or are you gonna no, have... I'm going to tell someone else to relay the message. <laughs> Who wants to relay that message? I've already called him once, so I'll call him again. All right. And he doesn't like me. <laughs> Why doesn't he like you? Because he's a Catholic nerd. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess oh, we're in, forgot. We're in Constantinople. He's probably like Orthodox, so he's still a Christian nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Lancia Sanctum has uh, denominations quite like that, but we'll go with it. Well, I I think just this is completely off topic, but I think like in the description of the covenant, they kind of tie into local ch the local church, and the local church here would be Eastern Orthodox. So yeah, that much is true. Yeah. Huh. Ethan, what is Ethan doing during this time? Um, 
probably sort of just slumped against the uh, sort of sat against, stood leaning against the side of um, um, Ventress's car, <clears throat> cigarette in mouth, just kind of a uh, sort of like just kind of watching the proceedings sort of unfold. Not really doing anything, though. No, no, not at all. Just the constant, just the occasional. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What about you, um, <clears throat> Kareem? Um, well, I assume he would probably be helping to herd the chickens back into the coop. Somehow. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, your phone call goes ahead and gets picked up. Just so you know. Oh, oh okay. He I, answers. <laughs> yeah. He always answers his phone. Yes, darling. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we got most of them back at the moment. We we're going to need backup. Uh, we just have them waiting inside at the moment. And we're gonna go attack the Carthians like you told us to. All right, I'll send somebody over with restraints of some sort, and he'll be there when he gets there. I can't guarantee anything with it, everything that's going on. Uh, Are there still Strix in the sky on our side? I wouldn't know. You think I've been outside my t my building? <laughs> You're the ones that reported Strix to me, so uh, you would have a better idea than I would. Alright. I'll get back to you on that. Uh, I hope the guy you're sending has a lot of chains, because a lot of them are broken. How many? He only counted 15 of us together out of how many guys? 30. I'm gonna say we're gonna need 30. Play safe. It will be done. And you... He hangs up the phone. Okay. Yay! I hope that guy comes fast. Uh, speaking of which, I'm gonna keep my eyes on the sky. And from what I remember the last game, were some, like, bolting off? Hmm, uh... There were already revenants leaving when you got there, but bolting's not really the correct term. Kind of wandering off. Just kind okay. Of and none off. are like a way away, right? I mean, there have been some that are were way too far for, you know, to even hear you guys discussing. So, I mean, those guys have disappeared off into the city. All right. Okay. Lose a few, but we got the rest. So, eyes to the sky for me, looking for anything glowing in yellow. Give me a perception check. Alrighty. Can you speak it? Oh, okay. One. Oh, one success. Uh. As you kind of look about into the night sky, you're able to pick up a couple of sets of eyes. A couple? Yeah. Uh... They're pretty far off into the distance, though. And they're on, you know, their eyes almost shine eerily in the night. I mean... A kind looking for them probably wouldn't know. They would just think they're a couple of little dim starlights, but, you know, kindred eyes are a little bit better than that of a kind. Okay, I'll make a note of that. There's more. I'm gonna just stay by the car. I don't think my social skills would be good, so I'm gonna just hang back with, um, Ethan? Yeah. All right, Ventress. Um, Stig Helm, 
You and Kareem have just finished mopping up the last bits of them <laughs> with your new friend. All right. Oh, I am going to you. I've, I've used um, Feral Whispers on as many of them as I can without literally just standing there repeating the same words to them. Yes. Uh, just to, you know, make a just, just encourage um, peer pressure, you know, to stay. Uh, <laughs> But all of a sudden, this is now not my problem. I've done my job. Um, I return to our vehicles. Even though I'd rather walk. Wait, did we ask how they even got out? They so they told us a couple like kind people like kind people came by and let them out, and we told that to boss man, and he said, "Damn the Carthians, I hate them." go blow up their Elysium. So, uh, okay, I may be paraphrasing a bit. Uh, paraphrasing too much, but it's similar. All right. So, who's uh, riding with Ventress, and who was who's going to ride with um, our lovely Deva, who isn't here? Uh, Yasmin, you mean? Yasmin, yeah. We should probably all just ride in the same vehicle for communication purposes. Because Yasmin's not even here, so... <laughs> I mean, maybe that's metagaming, but... <laughs> a little. They also get a kind of a weird vibe from them, so... I don't, I don't know, they keep, keep trying to tell me to, like, take off my armor. I'm like, what if I get shanked, though, you know? Like, you need your armor. <laughs> All right. I mean, I think my Jeep got enough room. My dog's in a trunk anyway, so I won't get shotgun. I guess I said my dog, dog is in a trunk. trunk. <laughs> <laughs> my dog is a, it's a familiar. He's fine. Doesn't seem very moral. It's I'm, a Jeep. And I'm also wondering, do Jeeps even really have trunks? I, I it's assume a... it's just behind the back seat where it's. Yeah. Open. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in the back seat, excuse me, I should probably phrase that differently. Yeah, I'm just like, I, that was more of the look. I'm like, wait, I don't think Jeep. Yeah, I, I return to the vehicle and I'm just kind of openly pose the question how do we want to attack? Oh, we're doing that now. We did have another warehouse to check out as well, so. Oh, yeah, we did boss seemed kind of urgent in the matter, didn't he? I didn't talk to him. I, yeah, who, who talked to him? That was uh, to Ventress. Him with that. Yeah, I talked to him with that. <laughs> yeah. Did he seem quite enthusiastic about their demise? I mean, it's them, so he's always enthusiastic about that. More than the usual. Slightly, yeah. Huh. Would going to the warehouse just to knock off everything that he told us to do, um, uh, would that be too far out of the way? Yes, this one is specifically at like the northern part of the city's edge. So this one's all oh. you pretty much almost have to leave Istanbul to get to it. Oh, it's one or the other for now. I'm down for either. Okay. Here goes, also, then. What about I you? I myself am not much help in a fight. Oh what yeah, we left your bodyguard. Hmm? What did his royal highness say? Okay, let's choose destruction. Let's go. Let's blow him up. <laughs> and in my experience, any chance you've got a jerry can in this thing? They hit the side of the jeep. And one more time, I actually missed that. Oh, any chance you've got a jerry can in this thing? It hits the side of the jeep. No one's destroying this jeep. Okay, this is good transportation. He's actually going to have a gas can. Yeah, do we have gas spare can? gas that we can use to burn other vampires with? Because okay, vampire then, yes, hunter I do. wants gasoline. <laughs> We have gasoline. At least just maybe just one gallon. If that's enough. I will work with a gallon. Oh. 
As you guys pile into the jeep and begin to take off, um, Yasmin's limo follows you. It's about the point once you get to the bridge that connects the two sides. I need everybody to make a perception check. All right. One for Kareem. None for Ethan. Nothing. None for Ventress. I I rolled. I was the first to roll. And you got three. That means Kareem and Zighelm. You're the ones that actually hear the explosions behind you. As you kind of turn around to look, you see several buildings on your side of the strait on fire. Uh... <laughs> well... Reminds me of a good old, good old 1202. 1202? What's happening in 1202? Fourth Crusade, when they blew up Constantinople. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I probably man. wasn't even around, and, you know, I was probably in the dirt <laughs> by then. <laughs> Maybe it was one of the times you got killed. Maybe. But, uh, no. Not our problem, focus on the task at hand. I mean, it technically is our problem, yeah, it's on our side, but... Defend the homeland or go attack? Which one? But then again, it's not something we really need to report. I'm pretty sure he knows that that's happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We are not the only mm. agents here. I'm sure people can be mustered to the defense of our side. We were ordered to strike. Yeah. Yeah, he knows what we're doing. We gave him a call. So I'm gonna just step on a pedal, just bolt over to do some damage. All right. Um, so, it doesn't take more than another 30 minutes or so to get across the bridges. And it's at this point that you start noticing a multitude and I when I say a multitude I mean you can't use your hands fingers and toes to count the number of yellow eyes you're seeing in the sky flittering about to and fro I don't like this <laughs> I don't like this I am Guys? unconcerned I do not believe in Strix it doesn't matter what you believe, there they if are. you can see it, it's real, <laughs> okay? As if I'm scared of a bird. Are they all, like, surrounding us or just hanging out? Are they doing anything? They're flittering to and fro. Uh, let me, I'm gonna, let's add a little bit of chaos here. Hooray. What? That's the spirit. I don't like it when the DM says that. You don't get to say that. <laughs> Let's add a That's little job. Of chaos. Let's add a little chaos here. Ooh, bad luck for you guys. Okay. One of the Strix actually lands on what the uh, top part of the Jeep and kind of is looking down into the back seat at, at whoever's in the back seat. Oh no, 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 not my dog. This ain't happening. <laughs> no. Um, uh, I'm gonna try to shake him off. I'm gonna just speed through town, just try to shake him off the car. You're gonna give me a drive plus dexterity. If anybody, Please. if anybody yeah, else wants to do just something, like punch the Strix. It is an open air cheap. We could just punch it. You can still punch it as I'm trying to do spins. I don't think me swinging my sword while you're swerving the car is a good idea. Harry, do something. Poke it in his eyeball. Don't cut who, my jeep. Who is it? Who is in the back? Who's in the front? 
That's yeah. a good question. Who took shotgun? Well, if no one's volunteering, I will. Okay. So everybody else would be in the back. Yeah. Hey, I'm basically gonna yeah lie down on the back seat, shotgun point up, and just take a shot. All right. <clears throat> now, um, unfortunately, Ventress. Your swerving doesn't really seem to do much. It kind of ruffles its feathers as, <laughs> as you swerve. It's just kind of like, eh. okay. it, it doesn't seem to care all that much that you're swerving the car. Now the shotgun blast, however. That'll get its attention. Yeah, go ahead and give me that roll. Because, well, there's the firearms with a special shotgun. Can we actually even hit them? Like, aren't they in smoke form? No, they're owl form. Owl and yeah. smoke form are the same thing. Smoky owl, yeah. Oh. There we go. Oh. Thank That's you. <laughs> I, I that one's a good shot. I, I, I can't let that roll go to waste. No, this one is actually oh. materialized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh no, that's actually kind of worrying. <laughs> they can hurt us. Uh, uh, your shotgun blast actually does dislodge it from the top of the Jeep and it kind of goes flying up. It, you can tell it's kind of wobbly as it tries to regain its balance in the air, uh, but it stays like that for long enough that you guys as you are kind of speeding down the street at this point, you're able to get away as it still tries to correct its flight. Is it, is it following us? Or is it just... It, it's still trying to get its bearings. Okay. <laughs> it, it took a shotgun blast to the face. Um, All right. <laughs> nothing more than birds. Nothing to be concerned about. Did you see the size fossil. of that thing? To make a stupid, you know, size of my sword joke, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm just bolting to the fight. This is their problem, their side. Unless that thing comes after us again. So you're just heading straight towards the night shift. Night shift. Yeah. It doesn't take too long from where you were in the city to get there. The parking lot is conspicuously empty at this point. Okay, I'm a drive past and just maybe just park a, a block away. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So parking a block away. Um. What's going on with you guys? Uh, Obsuke, I'm walking towards the building now. Walk. Well, obfuscated. Well, okay, maybe not walking, I'm jogging. I am moving with... I am moving. <laughs> um... Not obfuscated. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say not, not obfuscated, but carrying a gas can and a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> but would you like to be obfuscated? If the officer, there, I'm sure I could do things a little more subtly. I mean, I'd rather myself not, you know, go into the middle of the fray and have a mosh pit. <laughs> uh, so I can activate Cloak of Night and make others disappear. What is the... Really? What is the roll for that? Uh, no roll, just a vitae. Okay. Well, a couple of vitae. All right, go ahead and burn your vitae then. Yeah, I'll burn two. So I'm basically invisible, and as is whoever else wants to be. I would like to be as well. Is it two per person or just two? I'm, trying, I'm reading it, let's see. So the vampire can spend also spend a point of vetty when activating facing the crowd to vanish completely. So that's for me. Yeah. 
but it also says I can, before that, I can take other people with Cloak of Night. You use Touch of Shadow to take other people, not just objects. Right. So does that make them... Touch of Shadow, what is You'd that? You'd have do? to activate Touch of Shadow and Cloak of Night to bring someone else into Cloak of Night. And that's what I'm doing. And that's per person, or is that just whoever's near me? I sadly don't have my book right next to me anymore. Eh. Um, it looks like it's an ob like one object. So you'd, yeah. In the case of an unwilling victim for touch of shadow, the vampire must roll to touch his opponent. Uh, can't have an ob, and the animal or object cannot have a size greater than the vampire's own. Wow. I don't think We're Ethan. All the same size. Yeah, I don't think Ethan has the giant merit. Okay. Well, I mean, I have. <laughs> Enough vitality for a couple people if it requires per person. I will use it on me. I can use it on Ethan. Uh, Sighelm has his own office gate. Yeah, he can take care of himself. So Ventress. Yeah. Yep. All right. So enough for two people plus me invisible. So that would be what you you said it was two. So six. Yeah. So six vitality. Done. The cost, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a lot. I will put it to good use. <laughs> Don't waste it. Make it count. So, Ethan, what exactly are you doing as as you approach and get right outside of uh, night shift, which seems to be closed, which is odd for any sort of nightclub at this time. Um. First, uh, um, what does the actual exterior of the building look like? How, like, how many, how many floors is it? Uh, it's two stories. Two stories. Okay. Um, so yeah, just look and see if there's any kind of indication. If there's even if there's just lights on on the second story, if it's uh, um, like an office or something like that. Uh, you. Most of the second floor actually doesn't have windows, except for what you would assume is probably like an upstairs office. But it doesn't seem like it's a matter of fact, it looks like some blackout curtains had actually been pulled over the windows. Uh, they don't want people looking in. Right. Um, in that case, go up, uh, go up to the front door and see if. Is it? I don't know if it's open. If not, just listen. Listen at the door. The front door does appear to be locked, and as you put your ear to it, give me a perception check minus two, because it is a pretty thick door. Metal door. I'm going to willpower this one then, because that's an awful roll otherwise. Nope. You don't hear anything. You don't know if it's because of the door being so thick and really good soundproofing, or if there's just nothing going on in there. Hey, um, yeah. Well, if listening <clears throat> brings no answers, we need visual. Uh, is the door locked? Yes. I'd like to unlock it forcefully with my boot. Strength plus athletics, please. Taking down a metal door. I'm doing four two point oh. <laughs> <laughs> the door gives somewhat, but it doesn't actually open with your first kick. The door, kick again. The door seems rather stubborn in its unwillingness to let you in. Whoever owns this club must have spent some decent money reinforcing the door. Well, it's a good thing I reinforce it with a second kick. <laughs> <laughs> Your barrage of kicks do eventually jar the door open. But even for somebody of your particular talents, it was an awful lot of work to do it this way. As the door finally comes open, you see what it looks like somebody's already beat you to the punch. The front 
or the bottom stair floor is just a complete and utter mess. Alcohol bottles smashed all over the place. Drying blood across the ground. Okay. Uh, yes, Min was right. This is a terrible club. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty garbage. Uh, I, I, I draw my my sword and I'm going to start clearing the building. Yeah. Uh, where are you heading first? I'm going to clear the first floor and then go to the second floor. Kareem. Um. He's gonna let other people go in first because he doesn't have a weapon. <laughs> Vent Ventress, then? Yeah, I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna tell my dog Loki to stick with, um... I keep forgetting your character's name, Peter. All right, what's his name? Kareem. Kareem! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave my dingo with him. Kind of like guard dog mode. <laughs> I'm just getting ready for a fight. Ethan? Uh, yeah, provides rearguard. All right, so you're sticking with um, Kareem and them. Yeah. Uh, Sig, you come to the bathrooms, which you notice the large hole that now conjoins the two of them. As you kind of, as you look through them, you find a body that seems to have been forcibly shoved down a um everybody's already smirking thinking okay. back how do i make the joke again <laughs> everybody take a moment here okay um you see what looks like a dismembered body um strung across a couple of different um stalls you see another one that has been beheaded in another one of the st in separate stalls on each in each restroom but it doesn't seem like any signs of life on this first floor well if they were vampires they're not regenerating from that so i don't need to double tap them i don't think i don't think a vampire can regen a head in topor so or can they i don't know no. I don't think so. Okay, second floor it is then. I'm not going to stab the bodies to death again and hope they turn to ash. Looks like the problem um, is solved. Before we go upstairs, can I have a look at the bar and see if any of the bottles are still intact? There are a few here and there, but a good portion of them are broken. But yeah, you can definitely find a couple that are still on the shelf and some that were absconded from the shelf but n didn't actually break um at that point i'm gonna sort of uh in my hand spin the uh spin the shotgun round offer and offer it to either um karim or ventress either of you know how to use this thing yep nope oh, pass the shotgun to ventress thank you and I want to see if I can make a couple of Molotov cocktails. All right. Um, Save the whiskey. I want it. <laughs> Yo, back. You can't drink it. What? Vampires can't consume. Oh, this life sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to examine the bodies while they're doing their <laughs> prep. Almost, almost kind of rub salted. I'm going to find a bottle of whiskey and just go. Uh... <laughs> You're not getting this not gun there. back. <laughs> <laughs> I flick him off as I go. <laughs> just gonna stand at the bar and just, yeah, basically make however many Molotovs. It's, it's A, that I can carry, and B, from bottles that are obviously still intact. Uh, realistically, do you have a <clears throat> backpack or something? Because I can't really see more than maybe like two or three at most, unless you have a backpack. Yeah, no, I don't. It's, uh, it'll just, uh, yeah, essentially the one in, uh, one in one hand ready to throw and then two kind of between his fingers like that. So, like, yeah. so I can just hold them both. All right. So you've got three. Um, 
Kareem, you specifically wanted to look at the bodies. Uh, yes. In his research in the Strix, he, he knows that it's likely that they can possess dead bodies or even vampires, so he's looking for any signs that they're possessed or were possessed. I don't know if they leave signs like that. Give me intelligence plus a cult at a minus four. Ooh, okay. Intelligence. This, this is going to be, this isn't really something that would be easily told. Yeah. Ha -ha. Two successes. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, they would definitely possess corpses. You can tell these bodies have been dead for quite some time, and the fact that they haven't poofed into dust means that they're definitely not kindred bodies. Hmm. I relay that information. So these... These things have been dead for a while, but... Not not vampires, because they're, they're not dusted. Corpses... Strix possess corpses to do nasty things. They did number of this place, I assume. They beat us to the punch. Sig, you were saying you were uh, heading upstairs. I am, yes. Uh, would you have still been downstairs by the time he had finished examining? Mm. I'll give you the option here if you want to be there to hear that or if you're already upstairs. I probably don't care, admittedly. I'm playing the whole, I don't really believe the Strix are a problem. <laughs> so it's, it's just his, you know, book mumbo-jumbo. I don't know. Just nerding out. Nerd speak. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, wield a sword and then maybe I respect you. Uh. Ventress, what are you doing? You've been handed the shotgun. Oh, I was falling right after, um... You know, knight in shining armor over here. So I probably caught the tail end of what Kareem said. All right. So if you're following him, you both come up to what seems to be a VIP section on the second floor. Very clearly across the way, though, you can see into an office where there seems to be a crucified body or the remains of one. You're can't quite tell from this distance. Oh, we're at that scene. Okay. As you kind of continue to move forward uh, over to your left, you can see what look like VIP booths. One of them looks particularly disturbed. The other two look just, you know, the curtains just pulled. Well, I'm clearing the floor. Like, I'm not going to run ahead and leave uncleared stuff behind me. Don't want to get jumped. So it might take a moment to get to the, the back room of the, the office area, but I'm leaving no room unchecked. That, that back VIP room, you find yet another mangled body. This one is much more shoddily done. It looks like somebody had drugged the body there and then started trying to smash its head into the wall. So there's a little bits of skull and gray matter speckling the wall. Okay, I make a mental note that the, the, the warriors of the Carthians are quite shoddy. Uh, with us being in the office, I want to check some of the drawers or see if there's like a safe or anything. Uh, this is like a club area, unless you're going to the office and you're looking for drawers. Sorry, I thought. Yeah, okay, I'll do that when we get to the office. Okay. Uh, also, if, if you want, um, to use any perception checks, let me know. Uh, Ethan. Um, I'm guessing I'm still with, um, still with Kareem. Yeah, you had just finished making your yeah. Molotovs. Okay. Um, indicate the stairs, and shall we? Uh, 
Sure, I'm still curious about some of these marks on the bodies. What do you make of that? Um... I can, I can look at them, but... It's probably going to be a shrug and... I honestly have no idea. You're... I had you figured for the expert in these things, Padre. I don't know. It's just... Curious. Do you want to roll something? Sure. What would that role be? What exactly are you looking for here? Um, or what exactly are you doing? Uh, looking for besides beheading how they died. <laughs> okay. Um, give me intelligence plus medicine. Uh, that's a negative three. Okay, it should automatically account for that. It does. No successes. I mean, you do see bullet holes, but you can't really make out anything other than there was definitely a weapon used, some sort of bladed instrument, and some sort of firearm. Hmm. Guns and knives and sharp things looks like they died by. Okay, well. I don't think the bodies will tell me anything else. I'll follow you. You need me to hold Let's one of those. The rest of this. I see your, his hands are full. Do you need me to hold one of those? Just don't ignite it. I don't think it would agree with you. Hmm. He'll hold it kind of carefully. <laughs> I have nothing to light it with. And you both... Um, Go ahead. No. I was going to say, just uh, take out a lighter from his pocket that he just generally uses for cigarettes, but just kind of clicks it and snaps it shut again. Cool. That's where I come in. As you guys crest the top of the stairs, you can actually see uh, Sieg <clears throat> and... Ventress making their way towards the office with um, this crucified body. Lovely, that. Crucifixion, I thought you'd be all over it. <laughs> Someone has the flair for the dramatic. So it would seem right. And just look around, see if there's anything else that might have been missed. Happy to do it. As you kind of look around, you can tell that pretty much this entire floor was a battleground. Um, as you do, you find the same body, the same bit stridden room that um, Sieg found. It's not a pleasant image but outside of that there's not really much on the second floor for there to be found which brings us back to Sig and Ventress uh, Ventress you wanted to go digging through drawers and stuff so give me a perception check <clears throat> okay With two successes, I do actually have to now take a moment to consult one of the players. Hooter. <laughs> Mikhail, does he keep anything uh, in his office? Anything? What do you mean by anything? Anything of interest. Um. Well, he's got a, a gun in one of the drawers. Uh, what else? He does have a safe somewhere. Two successes, With... I would say. She found the safe. Hmm. What else could he have? I mean, 
there's general business papers, stuff like that, uninteresting things dealing with day-to-day, night-to-night bar business. Maybe a deep enough dig will find some less than legal papers. Doesn't have an exceptional success, so I will say those are scattered amongst the rail ones and, well, can't really tell the difference unless you were to really, really look. <laughs> so you find a firearm, small pistol, and a safe in this room. Okay. However, I take the gun and point out the safe. However, it is also very noteworthy as you enter the room that the being that is crucified is still alive. Uh, oh. Is he on? Oh, wait, no. Okay. Nope. All right. Did this once. I'm backing up and closing the door. <laughs> he is in the place where we were told to attack. I'm stabbing him. You're just who they growing? We don't even know why. Okay. <laughs> I, okay, well... No, I'm not see. trying to stop you. I'm just saying it's, a sentence as you're doing it. <laughs> it's alive. So yeah. is it... I guess immediately, is it a vampire? Predatory or a stuff? Yes. Okay. Um, is it an Invictus guy? Do I care about him? Like, is is this someone I maybe recognize? I've seen. On you my do not. I don't know. You do not recognize him, but it, it could be Invictus. It could be Carthian. It could be. It could be Seven, for all you know. I don't want the boss to be mad at me first. So may, maybe I, I let my own bloodlust get a little ahead of me. Uh, I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm, Still gonna draw my sword. I'm gonna point it at him. I'm gonna just allegiance. He looks at you with eyes that are fairly far gone. Uh, the probably the only reason he's still not in torpor is a fraction of a glimmer of hope, essentially. Also, um, speaking of that perception check, uh, Ventress. Yeah. You do notice uh, several bullet holes in the office, and it seems to have this char, uh, char marks around it. That's the word I want, yeah. Char marks, eh? Around these bullet holes. So, um, pausing on Sigheim real quick, Sighelm, Kareem and Ethan. Are you making your way towards the room as he points his gigantic sword at this poor individual? Yeah, probably. Sure well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looks. He kind of looks at everybody and he goes, "Unaligned. I don't care for your politics." Interest. How are you here then? I'm sorry, uh, you both spoke at the same time. Uh, Jack first. Go ahead. Then what do you care for? And what did you say, Envy? Kind of same thing. Like, what are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> I don't recall the last couple of hours, so I can't really tell you why I'm here. I remember waking up on this wall, a few people coming in, and then they all rushed out really quickly with a man that was really, really injured. Uh, all I heard them talking about were owls. A lot of owls, apparently. Oh. One of them was on the roof, and I think they just wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. Looking at this guy, is there any chance he's going to be in Ethan's sort of little black book? 
Probably not this guy. Even if he was, honestly, nature will probably, quote unquote, nature will probably take its course here soon enough. It's, yeah. I'm just going to kind of look over my shoulder. Is anyone, does anyone look particularly like, oh, we want to keep talking to this guy or because, you know, an unaligned could be a Carthian tomorrow. Carlos would be one of yours. If, if he was possessed by now. Strix, I want to hear everything. Yeah, you're going to come with us, buddy. I don't think walking is in my near future anytime soon. Or at least not till the next night. I've got a friend who can lend a hand. And he looks over at Ethan. Sorry, I've learned to be wary of people's friends. Who is your friend? I mean, some say that we have a striking similarity. That is cryptic at best. <laughs> you have your abilities, I have mine. I mean, wh wh what, what would I do if I even came with you? What benefit of it would be, of it would it be for you? Well, we find out what we, what you know, and in return you get to live, because in two minutes time this place is going to be burning to the ground. Ask your questions. What do you want to know? He he, he kind of looks away from you when he says that, Ethan, and looks more at Kareem, who I'm assuming is the one that's at least a little bit visibly excited at this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I'll step aside and let Kareem. Uh, tell me, what, what do you remember of the last few hours, if anything? Can we take him off? Isn't he, like, posted up like a poster? Can we take him down? Or shrug, shrugs. <laughs> I'm gonna help take him down. If me... This is gonna kill him. <laughs> Intelligence it... plus medicine. Before you do it. <laughs> like... Is he that Take one the dramatic shot? failure. Take the dramatic failure. Gonna, no, no, fail want... first. Okay, just looking at him, will he die? That's what the role is for. That's what yes. I'm... Yeah. Wait, hold on. What? She, got... she rolled an 8, a 10, a 10. She rolled two 10s, basically. Wow, nice. Yeah. Uh oh all three of the dice were successes. The rerolls got nothing. All right. So, looking at this body, at this person, I should say, you could potentially remove the implements, which seem to be um, broken off bar stool legs. That were that are being used to hoist him up, so to speak. You could remove them, but it would take a delicate hand not to just cause more damage. Mm. Mm. All right, I'll leave him up there for now, and we'll try it after we're done having this conversation. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on that safe. All right, uh, since you're actually telling me what you're doing, uh, give me... It's going to be an extended action. Um, knowing <coughs> knowing Mikhail's resources, it's going to be a relatively difficult one. Nah. <laughs> I would say probably takes, what, 30 seconds to a minute to be able to spin in a combination. Making sure that you're not hitting the same numbers over again, not entering the same code four times, and then wondering why it's not working. <laughs> so, I would say one roll for every minute, and you need ten successes. Give me larceny plus intelligence. Oh. 
Take larceny. Ha! I got one in larceny. And intelligence? Well, I actually put dots in it. Yep. Oh, intelligence, I think I got like, what is that? Three? So four in total? Okay. So it's four rolls, right? Four rolls, and she needs ten successes. Alrighty. All right, so Kareem, he kind of looks at you and he goes, I don't remember very, very much at all. Okay, uh, wait till I call for the rolls, please. Oh, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> we'll go ahead and count that one, but hold on. I'll hold off. Uh, he kind of looks over and he goes, I don't remember a lot, just bits and pieces here. It was almost like I was riding in the back seat of a vehicle, well... And the vehicle being my body. I remember... Remember somebody. I was... I was coming back into the city. I... I was... I don't remember... Uh, he's like, my head's kind of foggy, I apologize. But I remember talking with somebody. He was another kindred outside of the city. We were a group of them. I don't... I don't think they ever gave me their name. But... I came back into the city... And that's when I got attacked by the owl. I remember making my way here... And then... Bits and pieces of violence... I remember... A really... Big guy. Massive. He had... He had, like, a submachine gun of some sort. I think? He, he kind of trails off at this point. Now I'll go ahead and count your roll. Okay. It's taking him a while to speak, you know, between stopping, thinking, trying to remember, and, you know, the occasional just, I can't breathe at this moment. Mm -hmm. Ethan and Sig, what are you two do doing while those two are doing this? Well, the building's not completely clear. I'm going to check the roof, make sure there's no one hiding up there. Okay. Ethan? Um, yeah, just uh, standing by hearing out what this guy has to say. Any reaction when he starts talking about a big guy? I'm actually going to take a voluntary role of manipulation subterfuge to not show anything. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, wait. Two? Okay. All right. Uh, nobody's really looking at you, so I'm not going to have anybody oppose that role. Sig, as you kind of get up, you can act, uh, you see that the door to the roof is actually wide open, as if somebody left in a hurry, or opened it in a hurry. You're not sure which. But as you get up to the roof, you don't see anybody. You do see a lot of owls, though with yellow eyes flittering about. Well, not our target. Um, like, I know what I would do, but I don't really want to do it because I'd be leaving the party. What does Sig want to do? Well, he was told to go make an example out of the Carthians. There were none here, so we need blood elsewhere. So he wants to just start looking the city. I'm going to start hunting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are, is that what Sig is going to do, or is that just what you would want him to do? No, we're going to do it. We're going to do Why not? We're gonna we're gonna make the things difficult. All right. So, uh, Kareem, we're yeah. we're back to you, uh, you three. What is your next question for him? Um. Hmm. 
me think. Tell me about the group you met before you were possessed. What do you want to know? It was a group. Yeah, they were like living in tents. So I guess they were like maybe nomads or something. They were all vampires, though. That I know. They were all kind vampires. One of them felt they were all, or at least a few of them were pretty, uh, they seemed pretty old, a few of them. Their predatory aura was actually really, really strong. I was certainly stronger than mine and even stronger than yours. Uh, but it... There was nothing like the one guy. Uh, he didn't speak very much. And they were pretty tight-lipped around me. They were just mainly trying to get me to go into the city. Uh, they were saying that I was going to meet one of their agents here. And how were you meant to find this agent? He said that I would just need to head into the city and the agent would find me. They said that they had big plans for the city. So some outside vampires have plans for our city, do they? That's interesting. Ventress. I know someone else who would like to... Yeah, go ahead. Ventress, give me your next roll. Okay. You're at six successes, so you need four more to successfully crack this safe. Um, uh, come on. Okay. Ethan, uh, you kind of hear some muttering as Ventress seems to get somewhat irritated with the safe that she's going at. Um, so between the guy, crucified victim, and um, Ventress, can I have a look at this safe and see if it would take a, I don't know, say a two-story drop in on probably onto con probably onto concrete <laughs> this is uh, you like you look at this and you can tell some money was spent on this so it it's definitely shockproof fireproof waterproof right dropping off the roof isn't going to be enough to <laughs> no you'd probably a story roof anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe if you dropped it from the top of skyland towers <laughs> But that's its own set of problems. <laughs> now. Um, go ahead. No, I'm just... I'll let, the, I'll let the others just do their thing for the time being. Okay. Sig. You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Vampire the Requiem 2nd Edition Bloody Waters. Part of the Domain Gaming's Contagion Anthology. Written and told by Wyvarian. A special thanks to you, the listener. If you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. And as always, comments are welcomed. Until the next chapter, how will you satisfy that thirst? Uh, and with what? <laughs>